Hi, this is TapCat, and today I'd like to talk to you about XCOM 2 strategy. And I know the first thing I should explain is that when I say that, I don't mean how to build up your Avenger base. A lot of people will refer to base building as the, quote, strategy phase of the game and the battlefield as the tactical. Uh, but I'm actually talking about a higher level meaning when I say strategy. This is something that guides pretty much every decision I make, both on the battlefield and back at the Avenger. Avenger. Uh, but before I just blurt that out, <laughs> let me put it in context uh, so that my thinking will at least have a chance to make sense. So uh, it started with just simply observing the game or the dynamics of how things work. So let me give you some examples. First of all, when your soldiers get wounded in XCOM 2, it sends you to the hospital for as much as 40 days or more of game time. And because the way it works is it will assign the severity of your wounds randomly. So you can take just two damage and be considered gravely wounded as opposed to lightly wounded. And then the number of days you're going to be in the hospital will be based on, you know, that rating. So basically what I'm saying is getting wounded can keep a soldier on the shelf for a very long time. Another thing is that as you upgrade your armor, that does not mitigate hospital time nearly as well in XCOM 2 as it did in the Enemy Unknown era. So as you progress in the game, you're basically almost as vulnerable to these long hospital times you know, as you are in the beginning. Now, another thing that I've noticed is that promotions come way more slowly in this game. And in particular, you know, I would say getting to sergeant is pretty easy. Getting to lieutenant is noticeably slower. And each rank after that comes at a very slow pace. You need a lot of kills and you need to see a lot of action to get to colonel. And it's to the extent that literally you could have virtually no kernels by the final mission. If you're suffering enough wounds, you literally will not get enough kills and action, you know, for any soldier to get to the top. Now, what does that mean? Well, frequent soldier deaths or long hospital stays, they'll force you to constantly recruit new soldiers just so you can have a full squad for missions. Now, rookies are relatively cheap, but the cost of even them will add up if you need enough of them. And if you recruit a veteran through the um, uh, headquarters, then that will cost you hundreds of supplies every single time. Now, that's going to sap your resources and it'll delay when you can do other important things like upgrading your weapons or buying perks from the GTS. You know, there's a lot of things that you need supplies for in this game. And every one that you spend recruiting new soldiers, now that's not available for those other purposes. Next, uh, if your soldiers are at a low level as the game progresses, then you are gonna have a big problem. It isn't just about having kernels by the time you go for the final mission to storm the alien fortress. You know, as you go through the months, you're going to be expected to fight tougher and tougher aliens on each and every mission. And if you don't have an array of the higher level abilities that you only earn through promotions, you're going to have a real challenge on your hands to just complete missions successfully, let alone minimizing casualties. And if you fail missions, then you'll only lose more resources because now you're not going to get those mission rewards. And in some cases, you can lose contact with the resistance in those regions. Literally, this could ultimately cost you the game thanks to the Doom Clock if it happened very much at all. 
Now, I could probably keep going, but hopefully you're getting the bigger point I'm trying to make. In XCOM 2, letting a soldier die is bad. It's very bad. But the funny thing is, it's almost as bad if you let them get wounded with any regularity at all. I mean, if it happens once, it's not the end of the world. But you cannot allow multiple soldiers to get wounded each mission. Or the game is going to become a slow grind to the finish where you're constantly underpowered. And that's basically your best case scenario. So what does all that mean when you boil it down? Well, what I'm trying to say is my number one strategic goal for XCOM 2, a thing that guides virtually every decision I make, is that I want to take no wounds. Ever. Now, that's not even quite right itself because the real root of the problem is that if aliens fire at you enough times, you will take wounds. So the true goal is that I want enemies to take zero shots at us on every mission. Okay, now I know at this point there are at least some people that will be rolling their eyes and saying, duh, but I'm not talking about hoping you don't take damage. I'm saying straight up that you can approach XCOM 2 in a way that will seriously reduce the number of shots that are directed your way. And more than that, I believe the developers constructed the game to reward the strategy as well as even make it possible in the first place. Now, the most obvious way to accomplish that is to kill all the aliens the first turn you encounter them before they have any chance to act. Now, that's definitely something I try to do, but let's be realistic and acknowledge that it is just not going to happen with any consistency. So what do you do when you know you can't get to that guy in full cover way in the back or you realize that killing the Mouton in front of you will take your entire squad because you've still got the starter weapons. And what are you going to do about those other guys that are still going to be around? Now, I plan to do another video where I go into more detail on battlefield tactics. But the high-level priority is that any enemy that will directly attack you every turn that's the higher priority than someone who may seem more dangerous on the surface, but will often or even usually spend one turn not attacking. So let's give an example. If a sectoid shows up with two advent troopers, his psionic abilities and high health, they may make him seem scary. And at low level, you'd probably have to use your entire squad of four to bring him down. Well, then the two troopers that are still alive are 100% guaranteed to shoot at you. Okay, now consider another scenario where you targeted the two troopers despite the fact that each of them seems weaker on the surface. Now, if you kill both of them, the sectoid is very likely to spend his turn reviving one of them as a zombie. And if he doesn't do that, he'll almost certainly use mind spin to try and panic one of your soldiers. Now, what he won't do is fire a shot. So by killing the weaker enemies, and I'm kind of doing air quotes when I say that, we've gone from having to hope that two shots just miss us to knowing virtually for a fact that we will take no damage this turn. Now, there's other enemies that rarely do damage to you on your first turn. So, a shield bearer is a great example of that. Also, archons and codexes. Now, for those two, it's only the first one of them that won't attack. If there's two archons or two codex, you, you can't count on that anymore. One of them will attack you, so you have to try and kill one. At any rate... You get the idea. You need to kill the Vipers, the Mutons, and anything else that will attack you every single time they get a chance. Because those are the enemies that will do damage if you give them chances. Limiting shot opportunities limits damage that you'll take. Period. I cannot emphasize that enough. You let aliens take 10 shots at you, like Four of those, six of those, some number are going to hit. 
and that means hospital stays that you cannot afford. Okay, but let's go beyond the instant kills because that's just the most obvious way to address this. Mimic beacons are a huge asset. Bring them on every mission. If you have the Alien Hunters DLC, the Frost Bomb can tie up at least one enemy for two turns. If you have a specialist with Haywire Protocol, then you have a chance to shut down or possibly even take over enemy robots. A flashbang grenade, it won't stop an alien from shooting at you, but if they do, they'll have a much worse chance to hit. So again, we're still manipulating the odds in favor of us taking no damage. So the bottom line on every mission is I'm trying to find some way, any way possible, to prevent every enemy shot that I possibly can. I'm talking every turn. Because the bottom line is that they will hit a certain percentage of those shots that they take. The more often they fire, the more damage I will take. So I try my best to prevent them all if I can. But let's get away from the battlefield completely because... As I said before, this strategy is bigger than that. Now, the first thing I'll build in the Avenger is the Guerrilla Training School. Why? Because the squad size one perk will effectively increase your firepower by 25%. That extra soldier giving you the fifth up from four is huge. And there really is, I don't believe, any other one single event in the game, in the entire length of the game that helps you more than that. The next one that I'll build is the AWC because that's one that will get your wounded soldiers out of the hospital in half the time and that will help you get your promotions faster so you can you know, get those higher level abilities and kill more aliens faster. We're just trying to fuel that fire. Now, on the research front, you know, I'm all about pursuing new weapons before the armor. You do the faceless autopsy ASAP so you can get the mimic beacons. You know, you're looking for anything that either lets you kill them quicker or control or influence what's going to happen on the battlefield whenever an alien does live to see its turn. Now, don't get me wrong, getting better armor is very good. And I'm not saying you shouldn't research those things, but not at the expense of taking the weapons first. My favorite PCS and weapon upgrades are both the plus aim variety because, again, they're going to generate kills. And when I get a promotion, I'm looking for abilities that will either kill quicker uh, as opposed to the things that reward you for being inactive. Like there's some that, oh, if you hunker down, then this happens. Well, I don't want to hunker down. I want to kill something, you know, like that's, that's how I'm going to win, not by hunkering down. And especially in a game where there's often a turn clock, you can't afford to waste turns doing nothing. And abilities that reward you for taking nothing, those are not generally good abilities excuse me, that reward you for doing nothing. Now, I'll also take abilities that, again, they, that let me manipulate the probabilities of what will happen next on the battlefield over something that's just completely passive, like, say, blast padding. All right, so I've tried to boil all of this down into a reasonable length, and I hope that there's still enough here that it makes some sense. Again, I can't cover every choice in the game. I'm just trying to outline my basic approach and use enough examples to illustrate my meaning. And if you found this video helpful at all, then please give it a thumbs up because that will help other people find it. And if you want to see more here on the channel, then by all means, hit the subscribe button. And last but not least, if you think I left something out or you have any questions, then let me know in the comments section below. Anyway, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. I hope we see you next time.